join me in welcoming our first performer, Kathy Lynch. Hi, can you guys hear me or is that better? Okay, so I can't see you guys, so you guys have to be um, give me uh, auditory feedback of some kind, like when I go through. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, thank you, Hector, and all of the wonderful MFA students here for organizing. Thank you, Fisk and uh, JT and Mickey Blanco. This is very exciting. Um, just a little bit about me and my poetry. I write a lot about trauma, and I write about um, my personal history because I think it informs so much, um, and my parents' history informs so much of why I am here today. So um, my parents... Uh, lived their lives in Vietnam, and they, um, they, they immigrated to the U.S. basically in 1975, April 30th, 1975. This is the 40th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War. Immediately after the war, they left on a boat to the Philippines, and then from there they spent um, 11 months in a refugee camp, and then they came to the U.S. Four years later, I was born. So to me, um, the Vietnam War informs my identity. At, like, without that war, I don't know if I would be born. I don't know if my parents ha would have met. I don't know um, if I'd be an American, I if, you know, whatever factors were to come. So that's where I go, go back and explore. My mother still dreams of the war. Her great uncle was kidnapped when she was five and the rumors of the Viet Cong prevent her from ever returning to that place where the wraiths rose from the patties as she walked alone to school. In sleep, she can't erase her great uncle's image, his kind eyes and hair cropped close. In the summer, soldiers hid in the ditch just outside her home. She knew them from their distinct smell. Mui mi, she called it, laughing, that American scent of mosquito repellent and unbathed skin that she described as the smell of something burning. She was 13 when the soldiers touched her hair, clipped the strands between their fingers as if to cut them, and perhaps some piece of her too. Soon after, a village girl was raped by a soldier in a dried out gully. She was airlifted to the field hospital. My mother doesn't say it could have been me, but instead, the girl lived and could never marry. So my poems are, you know, fucked up. Um, so like, it's like, don't clap between them. It's like, woo! she couldn't marry, you know, um, <laughs> like, people are like, uh, <laughs> that's fucked up, but, I mean, you could be like, oh, shit, but you don't have to, like, clap after, like, each fucked up poem, so, <laughs> okay, um, in the next poem is, uh, dealing, I think I, I think about, uh, definition quite a bit, like, um, I think about the word rape, for example, and the way that it's defined so many times. Um, and it, the definitions vary. It can be medical. Um, a medical definition changes over time, depending on how people come to understand it. Um, it's different, you know, legally. It's different. It's defined differently um, in different countries. For example, you know, my friend said in certain countries, if you know, you're if a man rapes a woman, but it's his wife, it's not considered rape, right? So um, I always like looking at etymologies to kind of come to understand what is it, what are these words that we're trying to understand, and um, how is writing a personal account of these um, things, including the war, a way to add to that larger definition of that word? So this is looking at the definition of rape. In the late 14th century, the word rape meant to abduct or take by force. I think of an eagle seizing a fish with its talons. The Latin rapere was used for sexual violation, but only rarely. My mother says, be high, literally 
to be injured. When she was three, while playing on the floor, her mother snatched her up, yelling, the French are coming. The village women picked up their girls and started to run. Fucked up, right? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, it's about uh, colonization, you know? Like, you know, the French occupied Vietnam, and um, uh, one of the legacies, of course, is, you know, banh mi, which is like, you know, people, oh, Vietnamese sandwiches. I mean, because we didn't have bread, you know, we, we were a rice country. So, you, you know, you, you breed deliciousness, but you also have sort of like the legacy of, you know, um, you know a lot of French soldiers raped women. So, uh, more history. Um, the next poem is called Home Video. There are flowers on this bed an elbow planted by an ear. No, you cannot touch this breast. No darkness, no shatter, and no, no pendulum. The past is a blood clot lodged inside your lung. In the living room, shapes move against the wall. You're wearing a thin dress. You watch Beetlejuice while he moves his fingers over your white underwear. You watch the screen and see his fingers. Your brothers are in the room, but they never seem to notice. Behind the lens is the father. Mother offstage calls, Gon Gai Nai, on the phone. Gon Gai Thui, which means this girl, this girl's rotten, this girl like swollen fruit. She cuts off the bruises. She teaches me to cut. He rises to the surf. It detonates with a shearing crash. Inside each wave is a barrel. In each barrel is a vacuum that can suck you in, spin you round, snap your bones if you tumble the wrong way. If I say I've been touched, if I say by my cousin, then a neighbor boy, and then another, if I say no, I didn't want it from my first boyfriend. There was blood and membrane, and he didn't believe me if my body can be a box, if I can close it up, if it has to be open, who will touch me again? It's like Trauma Rama. I should name a band Trauma Rama, you know? It's like all I'll do is like go up, read my fucking poem. I was just like, yeah, some more fucked up shit. Okay, so the next poem is called Burial, and um, I think for me it, it's this coming to contend with in that first poem when I was talking about my mother being separated from her mother um, because of the introdu introduction of American soldiers into her village, um, you know, she pretty much didn't live with her mother from the age of 13 until, you know, until my grandmother was about to die. So um, we never knew our grandmother and kind of we didn't visit until, you know, she was on her deathbed. So. This is, uh, in 2011, I went back to Vietnam and um, went to visit her. Burial. There's the rain, the odor of fresh earth, and you, grandmother, in a box. I bury the distance, 22 years of not meeting you and your knotted hands. I bury your hair, parted to the side, and pinned back your ao yai of crushed velvet, the implements you used to farm, the stroke which claimed your right side, the feeding tube, the toilet seat, the pigs that slept so soundly next to the well. The land you gave up when you remarried, your grief over my grandfather's passing, the war that evaporated your father's leg, the war that crushed your bowls, your childhood home raised by the rutted wheels of an American tank. I bury it all. You learn that nothing stays in this life, not your daughter, not your uncle, not even the dignity of leaving this world with your pants on. The bed sores on your hips were clean and sunken in. What did I know, child who heard you speak only once, and when we met for the first time, Tears watered the side of your face. I held your hand and said, Bangwai, Bangwai. 
Ten years later, I returned. It rained on your gravesite. In the picture above your tomb, you look just like my mother. We lit the jaw sticks and planted them. We kept the encroaching grass at bay.